Well, Michelle and Philip, thank you so much for joining us today. I know that our listeners are very, very excited about a lot of the productions that happen at the Butterfly Club, but I guess the first question should be, tell us a little bit about what stir-fried science is. Okay, I'll jump in if you like. Um, It's a science sketch comedy show. It's uh, got sketches um, about all sorts of things uh, related to science, a little bit of philosophy, a little bit of politics, and it includes two local um, guest scientists who uh, talk about their research or present a stand-up routine on science or play the ukulele and song about science. We or have even the piano. Some the of piano. them play piano. We've yeah. got everything and in this show. Yeah. And it's a different couple of scientists each each evening. Some of them are doing more than one show. I reckon we could even call it cabaret. <laughs> what do you reckon, <laughs> Michelle? We could. Bit of dancing. So, Philip, tell us a little bit about how you first became involved with the show. Because, of course, you and Michelle come from very different backgrounds. So, tell us a little bit about how you first got involved with the show. Well, uh, Michelle and Patrick and I are friends that go back away. Patrick, particularly, we went to school together um, and went in completely different directions. I went and did a PhD in physics. Patrick went and became a, you know, world-famous actor and married a world-famous director and writer in Michelle. Um, We caught up uh, five years ago now, and I was bemoaning the state of science communication and uh, the apparent wane of respect for science and was talking about how we needed to do things differently. We needed to make it fun, entertaining, engaging and not educational, boring, dry and generally awful, which a lot of science is. And next thing I knew, Michelle had just written a play. There it was. And, And that's how it all began. May I interrupt? Yep. <laughs> I think I think I think Phil is telling himself short here because Phil came up with the, this brilliant idea we both thought, which was to somehow include scientists in in a play, um, and that that's the real that's the germ. That's what we do. We include scientists um, in that first play. Uh, it was a narrative about mm, having faith in science, or at least the scientific method, which is what the scientists wanted. And then it, it, it progressed to the scientists writing their own scripts sometimes and joining us in all sorts of different ways, improvising on stage. Um, it was a great idea. <clears throat> so, Michelle... From... Sorry. I, I said it came from Phil. And, yeah, I did write the play with a lot of help from the two of them and the, and the scientists. So, Michelle, after that initial conversation with Philip, how long did it take you to come up with the idea of what we see now on stage? Oh, I suppose not very long at all. I think we were firing and just had heaps and heaps and heaps of ideas. And we just had to work out which ones to choose. Um, But as I said, the very first one, we spoke to three scientists in controversial fields of immunology and climate change and genetic modification. And we said, what, what, what do you want? What do you want the, you know, the public to know? And it was very much about lack of faith in scientists at the time, still is to some extent. And they said, we want them to have faith in the scientific method, which is what we focused on. So, Michelle, had you had an interest in science previously to that? Or was this like a, a kind of a new dawning for you when you first had this idea after talking to Philip? Total new dawning. I mean, I, I read New Scientist sometimes, but no, science has not been my, my bag at all. Well, that makes you a nerd. That's in your bag if you're reading New Scientist sometimes. <laughs> Occasionally, yes. <laughs> so, Philip, you mentioned that you were kind of frustrated with the way that science was d- depicted in media and things like that. Now, of course, people of my generation, we grew up with programs like Beyond 2000. We had Come On Kids and uh, Ridgy Didge that always had like a a fun kind of science um, section during the show. But then when we went to school, we were put through these most boring science um, documentaries that they seem to have dragged up from the 1970s. What was it that frustrated you the most about the way science was depicted and, and taught, I guess, to a younger generation? Well, the fact that it is... Everybody assumes
teams, it's got to be taught that there's got to be learning happening, whereas science is just a really fascinating, inspiring, um, puzzling enterprise that's going on and finding out about the world around us, which is pretty natural and, 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 and at times confusing. And, and I guess what we want to do is, is give something that's a bit more intelligent and nuanced and thought-provoking um, rather than just presenting a load of facts in, in a you know in a package which is which is how science is so often presented now Michelle you mentioned before that this show looks at various uh, forms of science and various areas of science tell us a little bit about what we can expect from this season at the butterfly club sure well one of our scientists is uh, Melissa <coughs> Melissa James and she's going to be talking about sustainable households well I think singing this is one with the ukulele um, we've got Catriona uh, Robertson, who is an immunologist, and we get to meet the characters in our immunology system, uh, our immune system, sorry. The Immuniverse, and, she calls it, the Immuniverse, that's great. The Immuniverse, I love that. And then Sean Elliott's doing a demonstration with a Tesla coil, I think. Um, yep. And I don't know, what's Sam, Simon Pampina doing, Phil? Uh, well, Simon is the mathematics ambassador at the moment, so... Um, and he, he is just uh, a force to be reckoned with. Once he gets on stage, who knows what will happen. Um, I think he seems to be particularly attached to the 80s um, sort of dance song, Maniac, Maniac. Um, <laughs> and, he, and I think he recites 100 digits of pi to the tune of Maniac. Um, I, uh, I, I don't know, maybe by now he's up to 200. But um, yeah, be prepared for anything, folks. So, Philip, I have to ask, where do you find scientists who have these unique abilities that are going to entertain a crowd on stage? It's, uh, well, I, with, without my dramatist scientific eye hat on, I'm a science writer and, um, you know, I present, I, I organise other science events. And so I have a pretty big network. Um, I've been in, you know, doing science communication for quite a long time. And, you know, there's a lot of scientists out there. And, and surprisingly, well, it's not surprising to me because they're humans, right? They, some scientists love performing, some play music, some write poetry, some like art, some, you know, like cooking. They're just pretty much normal, normal folks. So, uh, yeah, I, it, once you start looking, you find all kinds of things amongst the scientists out there. Awesome. I'm actually, um, I'm stunned the way the scientists just come on board with this. Um, they all have a have a ball, and when you do learn an awful lot in a very non didactic sort of way. And seriously, if this sort of stuff was done when I was at school, I would have been interested in science, and I just wasn't. Yeah, but I'm just looking at this. Michelle, from a performance point of view for yourself as a performer, is it difficult when the show changes every night or do you just go with the flow of whatever's happening at that very time? Yeah, no, it, it's fine. Um, the scientists, uh, they actually do have their, their specific slots, but yeah, as a performer, I'm always ready to go with the flow. Um, but it's pretty tightly rehearsed as well, the sketches that we do without the scientists. Um, so it's a bit of a flow. You, you have us, and then you have the scientists, and then you have us. Uh, yeah. So no. A couple of years ago, we had we had scientists actually doing improv on stage, and that that was a bit chaotic, wasn't it, Michelle? It was a lot of fun, yeah, yeah. but it was pretty chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was it was fun. But the scientists have been just amazing. Um, such such a variety, and every uh, yeah, every single scientist has a different way to talking about science or singing about science. They. They're all so different, and all different ages, and all different levels. You know, we have—I don't think we've got any professors this time, but we've had professors and doctors and PhD students. You know, the whole range, which is great. Now, I guess this is a question for both of you. But do you think over the last couple of years, because of what we've all been through with the pandemic, do you think that people's thoughts and interests? with science have changed like as michelle said before for a lot of us science was kind of a, a class that we had to endure at high school 
But over the last couple of years, we've seen scientists in the news just about every night um, talking about the pandemic and talking about vaccinations and things like that. Do you think the way that we as a public view scientists have kind of changed for the better over the last couple of years? Yeah, I think I think very much so. Um, but it has polarised a bit. Um, obviously, there are some people who've disagreed with the way that the pandemic's been handled and they've kind of gone even further anti they perhaps already a little bit dubious whereas you know those who have been on board have seen um seen the process in action and i think what's interesting is to see how science develops right we've de we've watched a worldwide global experiment happen does this kind of thing work do lockdowns work do vaccines work um, do masks work? All of these different things are being trialled in different ways in different countries. And, and, and I think for people watching that to get a sense of how hard it is to analyse exactly what's going on, I hope has given them a an appreciation for what scientists do with data and, and trying to turn it into, you know, sensible um, public policy. And I would like to agree with Phil. However... I have a very loyal, I have a very loyal family member who comes to every single one of my shows without fail. So when I, but when I told her about this one, she said, "Oh, science, oh, no." <laughs> she didn't come. <laughs> I thought, "Wow, so polarized, yeah." And and also this idea that people have of science, some people, it's like, how do we how do we break through that? I, comedy is is the way we're trying to do it. Definitely. Well, I know a lot of our listeners are still very, very fascinated by science. So for our listeners out there, you can head along and check out Stir Fried Science at the Butterfly Club just off Little Collins Street in Melbourne from Monday the 18th of July right through to Saturday the 23rd of July at 7 p.m. every night. There are early bird specials with the tickets, so make sure you check out that and you can order the tickets through the Butterfly Club website or through Eventbrite, and we'll put those links up for you. But Michelle and Philip, you've got some very exciting news for our listeners. We're going to be giving away a double pass. So I was wondering, seeing we love to do giveaways with a little bit of a question to make our audience work a little bit, what science questions should we ask our listeners to answer and send us the answer through social media? My favourite science question. That's a tricky one. Uh, what is your favourite native species in Melbourne? Awesome. Okay, so if you can tell us what your favourite native species is in Melbourne and send it through to our Subculture Entertainment Facebook page, Instagram or Discord. If you're one of those trendy people that are on Discord, you can send it through and we will randomly select one lucky person to win a double pass and then we'll let you know what night you want to come along and everything like that. But I guess to wrap up, uh, Philip, Michelle, what would you like to say to everybody out there who was thinking about heading along and checking out Stir Fried Science? I think you'll have a very entertaining night and it's probably going to be a bit unexpected as well. Definitely. Well, for everybody out there again, Stir Fried Science is on from Monday the 18th of July to Saturday the 23rd of July at 7pm every night at the Butterfly Club. We know you all know where it is, but it's at 5 Carson Place just off Little Collins Street. And you can grab your tickets through the links that are up on our website and our socials right now. And don't forget to enter our competition as well. Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram or Discord by telling us what your favourite native species is here in Melbourne. Philip, Michelle, thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us today. It's been an absolute honour having you on the show, and I cannot wait to check out this show as well on opening night. So thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us today. Thank you.